All right, so when we last left off, we built this site that's looking a little bit better than the, just the standard HTML, but still not good. I mean, there's just people like me that just don't have any idea what they're doing with style. And we got to figure out how to style our websites, and it's always painful. My first website I ever created on my own for a business, I thought it'd be cool to have a black background. And if you know anything about HTML design, that is a terrible, that's like major taboo to do that kind of a, a thing, um, to have a black background and white text and, and that. So anyway, that was my first foray into it. Um, thankfully, we have some help. We have these two developers at Twitter who built a library of um, CSS that they built for each of the tags, how the H1 tag looks and how the body tag looks. And then they, they, they update this constantly to be current with current styles. And so we can take their CSS that they've created and use it instead of us writing our own CSS. And so these developers from Twitter uh, released this as open source and now everybody gets to benefit from it and it's widely used and it's called Bootstrap. And so how do we get Bootstrap into our app? Let's figure that out. So there are a couple ways to do it. One is to go to getbootstrap.com, which is Bootstrap's website. And in getbootstrap.com, we can download the Bootstrap files that we need. It'll download here. If I click on this download, it'll download a zip file and then I can go in to that folder and extract those files. And it'll pop open this folder. And sure enough, here are the files that, that have all of the bootstrap information in them. So how do I get those into my project? So I'm going to take and copy those. And then over in my project, Let's stop our app from running. I'm going to build now, now you just like you might suspect if we're going to use CSS files, they have to be publicly accessible to download. And so we're going to need to create a folder inside our www root folder to hold these. Now, I guess we don't need to create a folder necessarily for it to work, but we do just to organize it. I'm going to say add a folder and I'm going to create a folder called lib, which is for libraries that we're bringing into our project. And this is standard in .NET to use the lib folder. And then within that folder, I'm going to create a folder called Bootstrap. And then uh, just because I'm going to create a folder within there called dist, which will talk about the, that, that distribution in particular in case we have uh, different distributions. And then I'm in this dist folder, I'm going to paste this. So I'm going to paste my folders that I cut out so it's going to have that CSS file and the JS file that I've gotten from my downloads folder, wherever that went. There. Okay. All right, so now that those files are in there, I'm going to just make this a little bit more obvious. On the site HTML, I'll leave the... Well, I won't leave anything. Let's just get rid of this because I want, I want it to be obvious what's happening here. So... I'll save that, get rid of the, the stuff in the site CSS file, and um, well, maybe I'll, I'll do it in the heading instead. Let's, let's do a font family here and just pick one that might be a little bit more, um, I don't know what Franklin Gothic medium is, but let's go ahead and, and do that, see what that looks like. So on any H1 tags, and of which I have one in my index.html file, then it's going to change the font there um, oh, it was h1 tag it changes this font t in theory <laughs> and it does look different than than this so that's good um, let's see if we can get one that's a little more obvious here font family uh, gill sans sometimes when the font's not there it just defaults back to Arial. so we got to see if if i have that oh this looks a little different yeah Okay, so we can change things. And I'll just leave that there for the H1 tag. Now, anytime it sees in the HTML an H1 tag, then it goes to the site CS and applies that style. 
now we want to do that for everything and so that's what bootstrap is for so if i go into the bootstrap folder into that disk css folder there's our bootstrap bootstrap css and so this goes through and shows what what they have if i do a root it does this if i do a body tag this is the style that it's going to apply to the body tag if i do a h1 tag here's what's going to do the h1 tag um, and so um, there's all these different things that it's doing that, that again, they just built this library of stuff that uh, we can use to make our websites look good. It's already all in there. If it's an image, do this. If it's a table, do this. And so they've built this library that they constantly update. And so um, that's the Bootstrap CSS. Now that's the full code. If we open this Bootstrap CSS, that's the full code but they also always include a bootstrap uh, under this min file, which is the minimized version. If we look at this, the code's all on one line. It doesn't need to be read by a human, so it's just one really long line. It's a much smaller file for users to download from the server to the client. And so typically, we don't the, the users don't need to see what's in this file, it just needs to be used. And so we typically would use the minima, minimized file. Now, now that I've got Bootstrap in, if we run this, does it do anything? No, this looks terrible still. And so what's going on with that? Well, what's going on is, just like we did with the CSS file, we need to bring this minimized file into our app. And I don't necessarily need a, a link to it. I don't know why it's doing that. But we need to bring in our, meaning a, a tag link. We do need a link tag to go link it to our file. And then if I run this, let's see if that changed anything. And sure enough, it did not. Why didn't it? Um, and I actually don't know. Did I not save? I thought I saved before I ran it. No. And, and maybe one of the reasons it's not doing it, this is what I was gonna do next. So let's do it. Some of the bootstrap relies on some JavaScript occurring. And so just like we have this bootstrap CSS file, we have a bootstrap JS file. And so if we want this to show up good, then we need to take this bootstrap JS file. Now again, this is the, this is the file that has all the, the code, but they also have a minimized version of the bootstrap JS file. So bootstrap min JS, we drag that in. Now where does JS files go? We want them to be the very last thing that's done in the body. So we want everything to be loaded up before we run that JS. And so uh, the JS file comes in. Uh, we don't need, again, I don't know why it's doing these um, A tags, that's new. But there's a script file um, there, J JavaScript file, JS file, that this code potentially is depending on. So if I take that and run it, then sure enough, our bootstrap shows up. Okay, the font changes, it looks better, um, other than my things that I've done to make it look terrible, then it looks better, this font is better, and it's gonna style things differently with the images and how the website looks. And so that is getting bootstrap into our uh, website. Now there's another way that we can do that to get bootstrap in that you'll probably find easier, and I find it easier, um, but I'm going to demonstrate it using something called jQuery. But in order to write this jQuery code, let's actually, we're just talking about JavaScript. Let's add some JavaScript to this page um, so that we can use jQuery and kind of address a couple of different things that will be helpful for us later on. Spencer out.